Jim Alexander, go ahead. Jim, you're muted. I thought I had unmuted myself, sorry. Um, a night like this on your, your final final home game in Pauley Pavilion, how emotional has it been tonight? Uh, you know, I'm not really an emotional person, honestly. So I've been just trying to relish in the moment. Um, I know this is my last day in Pauley. And sometimes, like, they play, played a video earlier with our parents and just people who care about us saying some nice things about us. And that almost got me, honestly. And Lauren actually made a video of us too. We came in together. Um, and so she made a video for us and that almost got me too. So I, I've been on the almost on the verge of tears, but not yet. Nobody's got me yet, but um, I'm just trying to enjoy this moment. I'm so grateful to be able to, you know, have this moment, have this opportunity. Um, and like I've said before, I would never have picked another place. Um, I know I picked the right place coming to UCLA. So I'm just so grateful. I'm so thankful, but I do know we have a lot of basketball left. So I think that's what's keeping me, keeping me up, keeping me um, happy and not so sad today. I saw that you were consoling Lauren on the sidelines there at the end. <laughs> the emotions kind of got to her, I guess. Were you, you know, is, is, do you feel like that's kind of your role on a night like this to be, be the strong one and kind of help everybody else out? I think so. I mean, Lauren is, um, if I start talking about her, I'm going to cry. And so she's just been just a rock for me in college. And she's, it was emotional for her. Um, I think just, it's been a long four years and there's been some ups and downs for her. And so to get to where she's been, she's just grown so much as a person and as a player. And I'm just super proud of her growth. And so I think she's just realizing that like, dang, like this has been a long time and I've grown so much as a person, as a woman, and I'm going to miss these, I'm going to miss these moments. And so I think it definitely hit her. And I think it's my job as, as one of her best friends to come alongside her and make sure she's okay, but also let her relish in that moment um, of just being being nostalgic. So yeah. John, go ahead. Yeah, um, congrats on the win. Uh, you moved up to ninth all time in the all time scoring list at, at UCLA. What does it mean to you that you were able to, to reach the top 10 in, in such a big milestone? Um, it's definitely cool. I mean, there's so many great basketball players who have come before me who really have trailblazed the way for me to be here today. And so I'm super grateful and it's such an honor, um, but not really something I really pay attention to too much. Um, I have just been had great teammates and um, just a great four years here so far. And so they're able to give me the ball in places that um, to be successful. And so I'm super grateful for that, but not something I really pay attention to. Joe Reedy. Yeah, Kayla, just uh, the, with the three pointers tonight, school record 16 for you guys. Was it open looks, what they were doing on defense? Just what would you attribute it to? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of the threes that we got, they were really uncontested. And so that just goes to show that we are um, being a lot more just being, doing a little bit more in our offense to be able to get those open shots. And so, yeah, I'm super proud of what we're, we were able to do, but I mean, I'm even more proud that we didn't start the game shooting out well at all. And so just to turn that up and um, our defense really spurred that. And obviously moving forward, we were able to shoot the ball better, but we weren't doing that in the, in the beginning. So just to have that mindset to turn around, turn that around and not get so down on ourselves and to be able to hit those threes, that's super cool. And then just the cake on top for it to be the school record is super cool. And then just, Charisma struggled Sunday in the game against uh, Oregon State. Just what was practice like this week? And did she have a determined look that she came out tonight and triple doubled? Oh, yeah. I mean, Charisma, you're not, you're not, it's not, not many things are going to knock her down. And so, yeah, there's a tough struggling um, night for her on Oregon State. And so I think she took that to heart. And I mean, it didn't change what she was in practice. I think every single day she comes in practice to work, to compete, to push us to be better. And so that was still her mindset. And um, I know me and her talk a lot, like if you're having a bad game, that's okay. If you're having a bad shooting back, that's okay. We got your back. And so I think speaking that life into her and is super, super important, but she never loses her confidence, her swagger. And that's how we know we can always count on her, um, especially in nights like this. Haley Sawyer. Hello. Um, just with the Pac-12 tournament coming up, um, what kind of message does this game send as you head into that? Um, I think a big part of our emphasis was obviously it's senior night. Like we wanted to 
obviously send us out well, but I think another emphasis was definitely just getting better from um, last game. We know we didn't play to our potential and there were certain things that we just weren't doing and weren't locking in on mentally. And so I think to have this game sort of like a bounce back game to really um, just tell ourselves who we are again and really just execute a scouting report and do what we're asked to do. I think that definitely helps us for postseason because we won't have um, as much as much time to turn around and really think about what we did. It's going to be back to back to back. And so I think games like this are super important, especially going into the Pac-12 conference where the teams are so good. And on any given night, we're going to give, get everybody's best game. So I think this is a huge win for us. Obviously, there's certain things that we need to look at and get better at for um, the Pac-12 tournament, but I'm super, super excited to see how we compete. Any final questions from Michaela? All right, thanks for your time, Michaela. Yeah, I just wanna thank y'all for continuing to um, cover our games, every single game. Uh, I really appreciate you all so much. Have a good one. And we'll have Lauren Miller coming up next. Okay, we'll open it up to questions for Lauren Miller. Lauren, um, how are you doing? First of all, you, you good? <laughs> um, just um, one thing really quick, you guys do get kind of an early uh, early, well, a, free, a couple of free days, basically. Do you think the rest going into the Pac-12 tournament is going to be good for you guys? Oh, yeah, definitely. Even in years with the normal roster, we're definitely able to um, that first round by, and it definitely helps just with the preparation. Um, but yeah, the recovery will definitely be well welcomed. <laughs> Yeah. What do you, um and then just as a follow up to that, the um you guys look kind of back to your quote unquote usual selves last night. How did you um take what happened Sunday and then turn it into so much on court chemistry and success tonight? Yeah, I think we really did a good watch the film and really look in the mirror, quite frankly. And we didn't really make excuses, we didn't point fingers and we all just really took accountability for what we did poorly Sunday in our own individual performance. Um and we focus on how we can get back to our own standards by ourselves and as a unit. And so I think that showed today. Thank you. Other questions for Lauren? Yep, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, Lauren, uh, you've been on this journey with Michaela. Uh, does she continue to surprise you? Um. I wish I could say yes, but I mean, not at all. Michaela is, I still don't think has really shown everything that she is and that she can do. Um, and so I'm just so excited. She truly is, there's just no ceiling to her game. Um, and so it's just been so fun to watch her blossom and to really, it's really just a matter of when she's confident enough to do something because everything's in the toolbox, everything, she's gonna have the work ethic to obtain whatever isn't as sharp as needs to be. Um, so it truly is whatever Michaela wants to obtain, she's going to do whatever she wants to accomplish, she's going to accomplish. So it's yeah, I wish I could say I'm surprised, but not in the least. Today was just a product of the work that she's put in each year. What's the best part of her game? Um, honestly, I, I would just say the consistency and I, I don't even mean that in a, a scores way, but just the way that you know she's going to pursue rebounds, you know she's going to push the tempo she's going to challenge offenses and even especially this year to see her ability to pass and so but there's just her consistency to do whatever it takes to get a win whatever it takes for our team to be better um, and I think that's that's a quality that all stars don't have and she truly I know people say it, she truly does not care about her own personal stat line she gets all those rebounds because that's what we need and so that's just what she's going to go out and do that night but it truly is never about her and because of that she's able to achieve and just obtain so much more because she always wants to put the team first and do what we need. Thank you. Haley, go ahead. Hi, um, just with all of the three point shooting, especially in that second quarter, just what was the excitement level of your team and what role did you play in distributing the ball? 
yeah, I think we obviously didn't shoot the ball as well as we wanted Sunday. Um, and so our guards, especially, they, I mean, they take that personal. And so it was definitely cool to see them. They wanted to correct that. They wanted to show like that the shooters that they are. Um, and so it's, I mean, it's always exciting when the ball is dropping like that, you can't complain. Um, and so I think it's definitely fun and just for them to move. And that's always our goal. We knew they were going to collapse. Um, and so we knew that the inside, as long as we attacked the basket hard enough and we got inside touches that three was going to be open tonight. And so it was just, it was a hot night. That's for sure. Anything else for Lauren? All right. Thanks for your time, Lauren. Appreciate you. And we'll have our third senior, Lindsay Corsaro, coming up. All right, we're joined by Lindsay Corsaro. Once again, if you have a question for Lindsay, please hit the raise hand button. Joe Reedy, go ahead. Lindsay, with the, with the three pointers tonight, I think a program record 16 was it defense getting the open looks? What would you attribute it to? Um, I think it was also one of those nights where people are just hot and feeling it and just riding that wave. So that was that's always nice when you come into a game and you're feeling it early. I also think we've been working a lot on drawing defense in when we penetrate and then kicking out. And so I thought we implemented that well, knowing that teams are going to sag in on our penetration or sag in on our post feeds and kind of dig in a little bit, um, knowing that those kickouts will be there. I thought we executed that pretty well. Kind of the perfect senior night. I mean, you beat USC by over 40 and school record and three pointers and it just seemed like the perfect game. Yeah, it was definitely really fun and a really sweet way to go out for sure. Sue Favor. Hey Lindsay, so let me get this up in here. Um, now, what I know you're you're gonna move on. What is Lindsay Corsaro gonna do next? What are you What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine you not playing here. You've been here for a minute. You know what I'm saying. So I have to know what you're gonna do next. <laughs> right. You know, honestly, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out because I came into this year because I obviously still have some years left from injuries and from COVID, and so I came into this year. My whole motto was like, I want to have my hands open and take each day as it comes and just kind of not make any decisions. So I really, for most of the year, was just kind of like day by day, gonna attack the day, gonna have a great day and then go with it. So I, there was really no planning into like, here's my backup plan, here's this. Cause I wanted to be really present this year um, and leave it open whether I'm coming back or not. And then as the year has gone on, I've just felt clarity that like, I, I love it here so much, but I'm also really excited for what's next. So. The whole planning part is kind of supposed to happen now. So hopefully I start to figure some things out. Okay, well, I just congratulations. It's hard for me to imagine you leaving, but it's just been so fun to watch you play. So just congratulations. And and, and I'll, I'll keep asking Ryan what, what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. John, go ahead. Yeah, congrats on the win. Uh, you guys lost uh, to Oregon State last week, but then you come back and with this 30-point win. Are you guys kind of where you guys want to be for the Pac-12 tournament coming up? Um, I think I think there's always room to grow, and that's what Coach Corey really challenges us in, is like every day that you come in and practice, it's time to grow. Or even today, when we got a really big lead, our coaching staff and timeouts was talking about, this is really great live practice to keep on building and keep getting better. Um, but I do feel good. It's always, it's always nice coming off a game where you shoot really well. So that's fun that we're going into the Pac-12 tournament with that momentum and hopefully that confidence. Um, so I'm really excited. I think I'm glad we got another chance to redeem ourselves after Oregon State and get back in the win column before we head to the tournament. Haley. Hello. Um, 
kind of an abstract question, but just what goes through your mind when you're shooting a three pointer? Like at what point do you know, is it going in? Is it gonna miss? What are you thinking? Yeah, for me, I think there's so much muscle memory probably with all of us that you pretty much know when it leaves your hand, like that felt good, that's going in. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I know I've dealt with some injuries. So when my shot's off, it's usually because my legs are tired or I'm like compensating in some way without I'm jumping. So for me, it's always like, get your feet set and then just relax. Like, um, so those are kind of the cues that I tell myself, like set your feet, get ready, and then just relax and trust your muscle memory. Right, any final questions for Lindsay? Great, thank you, Lindsay. Thanks so much, appreciate you all. And we'll finish up here with head coach Corey Close. Okay, we're joined by head coach Corey Close. Uh, once again, if you have any questions for coach, please hit the raise hand button, but we'll get started with an opening statement. Well, I just, you know, um, <clears throat> just so grateful, grateful for the, um, the women that, these three women, who they are. And we always say the only two things that will stay with you for the rest of your life from these four years is who you become and who you impact. And uh, Lindsay and um, Michaela and Lauren and their family should be very, very proud of who they have become and who they have impacted. And so really, really thankful there. The, that's paramount for me. Um, also just really wanna give our team props. Um, they have served these seniors well today. They did this incredible video where they got video from alums, um, from their families. Um, edited the whole thing, decorated the locker room, did these really cool cards. Uh, it's just been a really special day for these three seniors. And I was really worried about it because we miss our fans. We miss all these things. I was like, how are we going to make this special? And uh, credit to the players that the non-seniors, they really went out of their way. And Pam Walker and Dana uh, and so many others that just really went out of their way. So really, that is the most important thing to me, that this, we honored our seniors and that we got better. And I think both of those things could happen. Jim Alexander. Yeah, Corey, was it was it almost appropriate for Michaela to have the kind of night that she had on senior night? Well, obviously, uh, she just really has been working on her uh, three-point shot. I think more than anything, that's what I was most excited about because that's been a real growth area for their here this year. And she put so much time into that last, last summer. But, you know, I, I love I, – I wrote them all letters today and – um, I pretty much cried through writing all of them, but, um, you know, with Michaela, I just think, you know, you, I told her you are one of the top players to ever play at UCLA. Um, but the thing that makes it most special is that that's not what she values most is she values the experience, how she's grown, how she's impacted people, but, um, it makes it really easy to celebrate her. Right. And really makes it easy to root for. Her. Um, so obviously, yeah, I think it was very fitting and, and, you know, Lindsay and her 10 for 11 from the three point line, that's pretty good senior night from the three point line. And obviously you guys still have some work to do, but looking ahead, what kind of Mika what kind of player can Michaela be at the next level? I think Michaela is going to be a great player at the next level. Um, I don't, I think it is the hardest transition uh, to make is going from playing sort of a forward position in college to uh, facing the basket three player and doing most of your work from the wing or facing the basket or, or off of pick and roll that way. I think it is the hardest transition to make um, going to the WNBA, but I think Michaela is going to be a long-term all-star and pro. I think she's going to be like a, um, a cross between like a Banaja Laney and uh, 
Um, Alicia Clark, um, I think she can grow into being an elite defender, uh, a great explosive player in the lane, um, versatile. Um, but I, I really think she could be a really long time pro and all star. And I think she's going to, uh, the best is yet to come for Michaela. Francis, go ahead. Uh, hi, coach. Congrats on the win. Um, so both teams kind of had a slow start in the first quarter, you know, in terms of turnovers and shooting the ball. But then, you know, that led to a record breaking night. So what kind of changed after the first quarter in terms of, you know, like your offensive game plan? Yeah, you know, it was disappointing, actually, our start. We were getting really good stops for the most part, and we were just not converting. We were, we were playing way too much one-on-one, -on -one, trying to shoot uh, contested shots early in the shot clock, uh, not making USC uh, guard multiple things. So we just were taking way tougher shots than we needed to. And obviously, the four turnovers in the first quarter, that's very uncharacteristic of us. And uh, just, you know, I thought it was really sloppy. And once we sort of talked, we really talked about stringing five passes together. And every time we did that, we got a really high percentage shot and, and also talked about they were really guarding the lane and that we needed to keep up our aggression to get to the lane, but realized that the real um, great offense were going to be on kickouts or fill behinds behind us. And once we got rhythm and started anticipating that, that was really the turning point. Other questions for coach? Obviously really pleased, a school record in three-point shots. I do think that's a major difference in our program this year, our ability to consistently shoot the three. We've been pretty consistent. Uh, maybe not this much, but not, you know, 14 or 16, three, 16 threes, I guess. That's pretty amazing. But um, I think that really gives me a lot of confidence going into um, postseason is, you know, I just think it allows us to space the floor and it allows us to use our versatility differently. And so uh, I really think that's been a really big difference in our team this year and something that's going to be really important going into the Pac-12 tournament. Joe Reedy, go ahead. Corey, congrats on the win. Your three seniors had had great games, but your sophomore with a triple double tonight. Um, what is it about her just responding from bad games? Because I think that first Stanford game, you two had to talk, and then she ran off five, six straight twenty point games, and then bad game against Oregon State, and does yeah. this. We just need nine straight good 20 point games. Can you make sure that we arrange that Joe as a response to that? Um, you know, I think the reality is, is um, you know, for her, it's all about uh, her composure in her head. I think that's honestly what I was, I praised her for at halftime. I said, your, your, your decision-making is so much better. Your composure is so much better. And when you do that, you're able to make your reads a lot better. So her passing reads, you know, obviously rebounding and, uh, uh, you know, the assists and then her points. And so, you know, I, I just, I'm really, you know, Riz, I've really been pushing Riz. And if, if I'm being honest, uh, I haven't been her favorite person a lot of the time um, but I just see such greatness in her and I see her ability to be one of the best guards to ever put on a Bruin uniform and that's why I hold her to such a high standard it's really because I love her so much and I believe in her so much even though if you were to ask her I probably have not been her favorite coach over the last couple of months was this almost a perfect senior night I mean you beat your crosstown rival by over 40 school record three-pointers triple double and then Michaela with the uh, 30 point game. I think, um, you know, the only thing that would have made it sweeter is I uh, really being able to have their families here and to be able to share it with our fans uh, and our alumni. I've been getting all these messages from alumni going, man, we never miss a USC game. I'm so bummed. We can't be there with y'all. And, um, you know, I think that uh, given the things that were under our control, it was a pretty storybook ending. Uh, but uh, I, I would be remiss to say I didn't really miss our, our Bruin elite members, our, our alumni and our season ticket holders. And most importantly, the families of our great seniors. Uh, you know, senior night's always such a special thing to be able to share. And so I wish we could have shared it differently, but for the things that went under our control, this was pretty neat. I, and I really, I said this after the game out on the court, but um, I really would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to the administration, to the ushers, to the stat crew, to the poly um, facilities staff, uh, to all of the people that worked so hard for us to be able to even able to have a season. There was a time when we didn't believe that uh, our county was even going to let us. And so many people had to work countless hours 
uh, and really do the work for us to be able to have a season and be able to compete in poly. And uh, I think they did a spectacular job and I'm just really, really grateful uh, for the work that they put in. John, go ahead. Um, congrats on the win, Coach. Uh, are you guys where you want to be heading into the Pac-12 tournament next week? I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I'm never, we're never where I want us to be. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, I think we, it was really important that we made a very decisive step in a response after our Oregon State game. It wasn't the fact that we lost. Uh, of course, you always want to win. And, and But, you know, I mean, Oregon State's a, an NCAA tournament level team. They're a good team. It's not that. It's that we didn't uh, execute our game plan and play to the level that we needed to play. And so I thought it was really, really important that we fought for consistency, that we responded really, really well today. And, and I'm definitely pleased with how we responded. I'm pleased with the selflessness that we eventually got to and how we played the game. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a pleased with the emotion we were able to put into this, but then still compete at a high level. Um, but, you know, I honestly think there's still things we can get better at. And I think um, we're going to continue to just focus on bringing joy and improving with intentionality every day. Sue? Um, I get, you know what, Corey, I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you the same question I just asked Lauren. You guys get kind of an extra day or, or two. Are, are you get, um, is that, you feel like that's a good thing to get them maybe a little bit of rest if they want, if you wanted to, or just a little extra preparation or whatever you have planned? Yeah, you know, we, we did that intentionally and we actually gave up the TV um, opportunity against USC if we would have played it on Sunday and chose to move it. And it had to be mutually agreed upon with by both schools. But, um, you know, it was intentional. We just thought going in with our roster that we have three games in four days that uh, hopefully that's the situation. And so we wanted to be able to put ourselves in the best position to be our best later on in the week. So, uh, and, and we've done that several times, you know, on the weekends where we've had only one game on a Friday, that's how we've sort of done it. And so I, I just think uh, right now, much more of the preparation is mental than it is physical. Um, so I thought it was an important thing for us to be able to do. Any final questions for coach? Well, I hope to see you all at the Pac-12 tournament, but always uh, want to make sure that I tell you how appreciate, appreciative I am of your support and your coverage. And you know how passionate I am about growing the coverage of women's basketball and women's sports in general. And so just really appreciative of you guys showing up day in and day out and telling the stories of these women. I, I really, just because I try to say it often doesn't mean it's any less genuine. So please know that you're making a difference and we really appreciate your coverage. All right. Thank you, coach. Have a good one.